Hey guys, it's Alex Torelli from Conscious Poker, and today I'm really excited to announce a partnership with Phenom Poker, a new online poker site, and there's so many cool things about it. I'm so excited to break it down and announce it here, but welcome to the channel. We're gonna dive into a lot today, but before we do, you can visit joinphenom.com to earn 100 free tokens to get started with Phenom Poker. There's a link in the description with more info, so if you uh, wanna learn more about that, check that out. But for now, let's dive in with Matt. Instead of me giving you uh, a whole talk about why I'm excited about it, we're going to be interviewing uh, and having the CEO and founder, uh, Matt Vallejo, here as well. So, uh, Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here, and uh, welcome, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, so, Matt, I think a good place to start is just, um, of course, we'll talk about Phenom. I'm really excited to get into that. But I think a good place to start is just to learn more about you, your journey, how you got into poker, and what brought you to start Phenom. So, I got into poker like like most people um, during the poker boom. 2004 was the year that I kind of discovered poker um, and started out recreationally, $20, $40 home games like like most people during that time um, and kind of started playing online. And I ended up uh, quitting my job, starting playing for a living in 2008, spent eight years playing uh, as my primary source of income. Um, and then I actually started a technology company in 2014, which scaled up pretty well through a, a, an institutional A and B round. So, you know, to some 20 years uh, playing poker and in the poker industry um, in the last uh, decade or so uh, building technology companies. So Phenom was kind of the the birth of uh, uh, of those two parts of my background that uh, really aligned well. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think it's so cool that you have technology background and you've ran a team, you've scaled a business. I think in my experience just with poker sites and seeing some operational things, it's so much of it is about being able to execute. I mean, this one thing you have a great vision. We'll talk about that, but I, I think it's really important to be able to execute on that. And your background and having built and scaled the tech company is, is I think an integral part of, of why I'm excited about being a part of Phenom. So that's really cool. What kind of brought you to the idea of Phenom? Like kind of, you know, you, you, you know, you sold it, this technology company, you guys had an A and B round. Um, you took some time off. How did you get to decide about Phenom and what um, what challenges do you see in the poker space and why, you know, did Phenom come about? It just comes down to a lot of us in the poker industry have been waiting for um, something new and innovative in the space that that has a focus on transparency, security, uh, protecting the players. Um, we've seen a lot of different things like uh, scandals, uh, cheating scandals, RTAs, collusion, bots. Um, and we, we've just we've just seen it over and over and over again, starting with, you know, the the Black Friday poker blow up in the online poker space, uh, particularly in the U.S. I like a lot of other people have just been waiting for you know what is what is that what like what's going to kick off the next online poker boom, and I think what we're seeing is we're just seeing a lot of hesitancy in the space um, of players wanting to jump back into like the good old days of you know which you and I were a part of you know photo oh, yeah. poker and poker stars in the good party old days. poker party poker. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, rail heaven. Oh my that. gosh. And, and, and I, I, I miss those days and I, I don't see, you know, we're a global game, you know, we're, we're an industry that welcomes, um, all backgrounds and ethnicities and ages. And, um, you know, I, I don't see any reason why we can't go back to something like that. Um, but you know, with a better solution towards some of these scandals and problems that, that we all face, that's, I think, keeping a lot of people on the sidelines. Yeah, that's a great background. Thank you for that. And so what do you think makes, you mentioned the transparency, you mentioned the security. I think those are big issues that we're definitely going to touch on. Um, we've seen many problems with that throughout, throughout the years. What do you think is it that makes Phenom unique? So talk about some of maybe the, uh, the ways that you, you see Phenom solving some of these challenges. You know, first and foremost, we're an online poker site, you know, and other, we've, we're obviously out in the public realm now. People are talking about us. People are asking questions. And I think, you know, they see crypto poker and they think that that's the main differentiator. And although we use Web3 technology and it is a differentiator to some degree, I think the thing that is very different about us um, is our, our emphasis on community first. Um, and so that starts with our decentralized ownership model. Um, every single player becomes an owner through our reward system, which is innovative and pays a weekly rake share as well as gives voting rights to the players. We want to give the community a voice. Um, the people behind the project are all um, have, you know, really deep seated poker backgrounds. So we understand some of the challenges that, that the players face and how we have felt unheard of. It. Um, you know, we go to these operators and we say, you know, protect us and you know, in, invest in better technology, you know, invest in a better UI, you know, security. Why, why can't I play on mobile devices? Well, you know, and um, where's the security? Where's the where's the KYC? And, and, you know, instead of, you know, going and say, hey, Mr. Operator, you know, help us. We just decided what if we made the players the operators? 
What if we gave the community a real voice? What if we made sure everyone involved in the project actually understands what the what the players are dealing with down at the um, at that level? You know, and I, I that I think that is the core differentiator and everything else is just us trying to solve these challenges one at a time. So what does it mean to be community owned? I think that's um, uh, something that's very well talked about in the Web3 space with DAOs and, and things like that. But for people that aren't familiar with Web3 or that are coming, you know, learning about Web3 or just getting involved, this idea of community owned is not something that's it, yeah. that's, that's that there. And I think I believe in a future where, um, you know, we're going to see businesses that are very community owned and that you're going to have distributed ownership through the blockchain. I'm really passionate about that future world. But what it, you guys are kind of pioneering this. We've talked about this with other projects that we're both interested in and excited about. Yeah. So what does the community owned feature mean and how how does that actually work? Yeah, so um, this is something we thought about quite a bit, actually. You know, um, the Web three and crypto space is something I've been, you know, interested in and involved in for quite some time. Um, but I've also seen a lot of misapplication of of the of what is at its core a very cool concept of decentralization. Um, and what ends up happening in the crypto space is you have these tokens that get launched, and it's not really clear what you own when you own the token. So what we wanted to take some of those core principles but apply them in a slightly different way. And so what we did is we created a token um, that represents actual equity in the site. And instead of just saying, hey, this is some you know cryptocurrency uh, that's a utility or, or something to that degree, we said, you know, how do we make it so that it's very clear what you're actually holding? And so the token represents actual equity in the site um, and it gets paid a weekly revenue share based on the net rake that the site generates. Um, and that gets paid weekly to all holders. Um, it comes with voting rights. Basically, what we do is we distribute half of the ownership to the site to the people that are playing on the site um, in, a, in a pool that we call the community pool. So um, <clears throat> as the site grows, it becomes more and more decentralized. It has more and more owners. And also, this is kind of more and more voters that have different competing interests the, the community, that are similar interests, but that they're voting independently. So it's not just you voting or me voting or anyone else of the, right. the, the core team voting. It's a player that's playing on the site, earning rake back. They earn rake back in tokens. They own those tokens. They have ownership of the site. So it's a dividend because it gets paid income, but it's also a voter sh owning uh, votership rights. Is that correct? That, that That's exactly right. And and over time, the community's voice um, represents a larger and larger piece of the pool. So um, it's, you know, people have said, well, it's not truly decentralized if the founding team has a, such a large vote early on. And, you know, my answer to that is it's a feature, not a bug. Right. Because the operators, you know, we have to be able to make decisions and move quickly in the early days. Um, but as the organism grows, we want to make sure that the community always has a, a sizable voice. Um, so not the only voice. You're always going to need operators with experience and background in gaming and running technology and things like that. But um, the community voice, it's really important to us that it's always a, it's always a big piece of the equation. What excites me about it is just in the past. I mean, I've been part of many poker sites. I play, I mean, been a part. I've been playing on many poker sites. And a lot of times you earn, you know, uh, points. And then with these points, you convert them to buy, maybe you buy into a tournament. So there's some dollar utility to these. But a lot of times you buy gifts, you buy things, you buy items that are kind of just like souvenirs and stuff. And so the time you spent playing is not really monetized that well. It's not like that valuable. And so what I think is really interesting about the, the game theory sort of incentives of Phenom is if you're a player, right, and you're debating, you know, it's a free market, you can play anywhere right? Uh, where are you going to play? You're going to want to play probably on the site that gives you the most incentive to play there because you're earning the most from monetizing your time that you're playing there. Obviously, the games have to be good, but assuming that there's equal skill level games across all sites, that the market's quite efficient in that way, the the differentiator, I mean, we'll talk about other ones with the security and that sort of thing, but one of the big differentiators becomes what is the site giving back to me? And, and on Phenom, on other sites, you have no voice. You make a complaint about there being cheating or RTA. Sites do nothing. They don't care. You, you know, you don't. You get your rake back taken away on certain sites if you're too too good of a winning player. On Phenom, you get rake back in the form of ownership, and then that's monetized through a weekly dividend, which is incredible. You could sell those tokens back to the treasury at any time, um, and then you also get voting rights. So to me, it's like a very compelling incentive for a player to onboard those players because they're going to be like, oh, this is a site that is I'm part of the site. And I think just from my point of view, um, being parts of other sites in the past and being part of Phenom, it's a different relationship in that, you know, I'm an owner of Phenom as, as well. Yeah. So it's like I have a different uh, care about the site. And so it makes me really excited to be a part of it. So I can imagine other people will feel the same as, as players, too. So I think it's a really lucrative model. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts on that. Um, so 
what 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 can you do with the tokens when you own like like how does the voting work with the community like does anyone submit a proposal and then the majority share implements it what's an example of a community vote that might happen yeah so um <clears throat> i mean it, it could be almost anything which is pretty cool um but like one example would be you know 50 percent of the net rake is automatically distributed to token holders Right. As the site grows and we're going to have to figure out, you know, the other 50 percent is where the operating expenses and marketing and things like that come out of. Um, you know, once we get a clearer picture of, of what is needed on that side, there may be adjustment. Right. Like, for example, the community might propose that 60 percent um, needs to get distributed or 45 um, percent. That's a, that's as one example. Um, another example might be um, a new policy regarding uh, usernames versus real names or outing cheaters or. Um, or creating a creating a fund to reimburse people that you know maybe were cheated um, in in some you know scenario that could happen we've seen happen many times like where do the funds come from so um, anybody can submit a governance proposal and that would go to a, a vote um, it's it's equal weighted um, you know um, with uh, across token holders so the more tokens you own the more voting power you have fair um, and um, yeah, we basically will set a, a, a number that will constitute a quorum, like a minimum number to pass the proposal. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then majority majority wins. I love it. That's so cool. I think making it community owned is is an amazing feature because in a way, um, there is a community voice, you know, on Twitter where like the community will say what it wants. But then the challenge is that that's often at odds with the, the site and the operators that don't right. necessarily listen. Whereas in Phenom's model, like that community, if that community is a majority, if all of you know, poker Twitter is saying one thing and they're all part of Phenom, they can move that into an initiative that gets passed and That's that exactly becomes right. the default way the site operates. So I feel like in this model, it's more efficient. I feel like the game theory incentives are there to help <clears throat> move the market towards truth and efficiency and 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 honesty. And I think that's an, it's a really important in poker. We t there's two other things I want to cover um, more, but two, two other main things. We talked about Black Friday. We were both there for that. I remember where I was. Of course, I think everyone does when Black Friday happened. Um, and just the feeling of lots of capital being locked and not knowing if you'll ever get it back. And even if you do, you know, it, your, your liquidity is locked for years and yeah. the stress, the time, the hassle. How does Phenom um, solve this challenge? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> one of the other core differentiators uh, between Phenom Poker and a traditional site that takes um, traditional fiat deposits and withdrawals is we use Web3 technology and smart contract technology um, to there's no traditional deposit or withdrawal. A player will connect their Web3 wallet of their own choice that they own and control um, and they deposit funds into a table smart contract when they're actually playing um, or a tournament smart contract if they're playing a tournament. Um, <clears throat> The funds remain in the smart contract along with the other players' funds who are playing at that table uh, until the player is done playing. And when they're finished playing, uh, they get instantly settled out to their crypto wallet. The thing that we think that solves or will help solve um, is only a very small percentage of a traditional site's overall funds, right? Uh, what would constitute normally a, a traditional site's overall funds um, are ever at risk. So in, the, uh, in, in a black swan event like Black Friday, um, where you have billions of dollars of player funds that are on deposit. Um, in the case of Phenom Poker, it's only the funds that are ever at play, which might be 1% to 3% of that amount, right? So um, the footprint, the attack footprint is, is way, way smaller. Um, also, the site itself doesn't control or custody those funds. Um, so we remove the temptation for bad actors, right? For someone to say like, wow, that we'd have you know, 500 million sitting in a bank account. And we have, you know, we've seen this happen in the poker industry, unfortunately. Also in the crypto uh, industry with FTX. Um, I mean, you uh, see yeah, it in crypto. Exact same thing, right? FTX has billions of dollars of customer deposits and you have a very small group of people um, that, you know, that are kind of unregulated and can do whatever they want with those deposits. And um, as we've seen before, they, if, if they can, they will, right? So we, we would like, we want to take away those possibilities um, and really reduce the chances of, of, the overall impact on the industry that a black swan event can have. You know, FTX, you know, pulled the entire crypto industry back hundreds of billions of dollars in value. Um, the the black swan event that was Black Friday in our industry, you know, set us back years yeah. in terms of growth and people being able to play and funds and locked. Trust and, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> I know me personally. You know, um, the bulk of my net worth was on uh, Poker Stars on full tilt <laughs> when Black Friday hit. Um, and so, yeah, you know, in, in retrospect, it's like, why did I keep so much funds on those sites? Um, because I trusted them. I trusted them that, you know, that there was 
there wasn't the possibility that something like that could happen. As it turns out, you know, even even the ones that were solvent weren't necessarily managing those funds correctly. Yeah, I think I mean what what happened just at a high level is people use online poker sites as a bank. Right. I mean, it's essentially a bank, right? It's a bank for your poker bankroll. And some people have, like you said, large parts of their net worth on these sites because, you know, it's a friction to cash it out or they think, you know, whatever, I'll leave it on there till next week and then something happens. And then, you know, the, the black swan moment could happen at any time. So people, maybe they're only using, you know, and if poker players have prudent bankroll management, maybe you're only using 5% of your bankroll at any one time. Right. So if you have 100K bankroll, you might only be using 5K of it or 10K of it. Right. If for tournaments on a Sunday or for cash games, but you leave 100K there at some point. And so your risk is 10X or 20X what you're actually utilizing. Whereas with Phenom, you only are using the money that's actually in play at right. any one time. So if you're playing 510 and you're playing four tables, you have $4,000 at risk, but $4,000 is in play. Right. As soon as you cash out, that money goes into your, your MetaMask wallet, your Phantom wallet, whatever crypto wallet you use, but you control those funds. Right. So it's instant deposit and settlements. Um, uh, and I think that's incredible because it, it removes that risk of um, security and temptation for bad actors that, and, and, and any sort of you know, Black Friday cat, cat, catastrophe happening. What are the fees like um, and how is that different than fiat? Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's another huge value proposition. Um, so we're building on Polygon and, um, you know, Polygon is, has been around a while. Um, you know, it's it's been able to, there's 37,000 distributed apps on Polygon and, and growing fastly, uh, growing fast, sorry. Um, and they, um, they've been able to scale without any major breaches, hacks, you know, problems like that. The other uh, <clears throat> value add is fees are about a half a penny on Polygon. Um, so you can go and play poker um, without, you know, having to one, wait days or weeks to get your money in play. Um, and two, it costs you half a penny to deposit and withdraw to deposit from the table. Withdrawal. Right. The, well, the, the withdrawal, uh, Phenom's paying that fee. Cause we're the ones sending you the money, right? So we're paying a half penny to, uh, we're paying the half penny to Polygon. When we send you money, you're paying a half penny to Polygon when you send uh, the site money or the table contract money. Um, so the fees are, 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 are very minimal. Um, we've also um, um, going to be announcing a partnership very soon. Um, that's going to make it very easy to bridge funds. And, you know, for those that aren't super familiar um, uh, with bridging, it's basically the idea that you could have stable coin on another blockchain um, and easily convert into USDT on Polygon, which is what the site uses as its kind of playing currency. We, we saw the, you know, you showed me the interface. It's basically, you're not going to even know you're using a bridge. You're not going to really know you're, you're interacting that well with crypto because you just kind of click a button and it happens behind the scenes and your money goes into the table. So it's right. a very seamless process. And I think getting, I think crypto always needed to get to the point where people don't really you know, know they're using it. It's happening behind the scenes. They're getting the benefits from the technology and the security without having to deal with the front end frustrations of the clunkiness and the right. the techno the technological savviness that one needs to use that technology. And I feel like Phenoms is right there. First and foremost, we're a poker site, right? So we want it. We want poker players um, of all kind of technology skill levels to be able to easily get on the site, play the game that we all love, um, not be you know hit with fees, delays. Um, asking permission to get our money back um, and also not have to worry about, you know, are the games fair? You know, does the site care about me? And, you know, that is ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I think this is the this is definitely a hot topic right now with everything going on in poker. How do you guys I mean, what is your stance on on bots, on cheating, on RTA? Um, what does Phenom do to kind of to protect the players? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's there's no um, simple answer to that question. Um, you know, there's these are these are ongoing problems that that <clears throat> the industry has faced. And anytime you have a lot of money at stake in any industry, you're always going to have people that are coming trying to game the system. Right. Trying to you have your bad actors, you have your people that are um, they're going to try to, um, you know, get their slice of the pie, whether whether it's fair or not. You know, that that's that's just kind of the nature of the, of the business. And so um, my stance is that, you know, these are serious problems. And you need operators who care deeply about the end customer, which is the player and the community, um, to be able to solve these problems. And I can't speak for the other operators out there. I can only see, you know, what everyone else sees. And what I have seen is that the operators, in my opinion, just aren't doing enough. Um, so, you know, 
I'm not claiming that Phenom Poker has, you know, a magic button where we're just going to instantly solve every problem that exists. Uh, what I can say is that we are committed to doing everything we can to solve these problems and putting the player community first. So that starts with our KYC process, making sure that we know the identity of everyone who's on the site playing. Um, you know, that starts with uh, uh, transparency, um, every, you know, being transparent about how we do things, you know, how much uh, money the site is making, what are we investing in, what are the initiatives that we're taking. Um, and that also starts with hiring, you know, a world-class team um, <clears throat> to, to take on these issues. So um, from our, um, you know, big data algorithms to kind of identify anomalies in, in playing patterns that would um, help us uh, suss out, uh, you know, a, a collusion a scenario or um, to to our data policies, you know, to prevent data mining so that, you know, we can um, do our do our best to prevent, um, you know, the use of real time assistance software um, to just, you know, investing in these initiatives um, wholeheartedly. Um, I think that, you know, and then reducing the attack footprint is kind of what we touched on earlier, too, is like um, <clears throat> because there's always going to be people trying to gain the system and, you know, they're going to always evolve. We have to evolve at a similar pace. But another thing we can do is just to reduce the overall attack vector, right? Um, if there's, you know, a, a much smaller sum of money at stake at any given time, you're already 97% safer because you can't have a $5 billion blow up like we've seen in the past, right? Um, and so um, those are just some of the many things that we're doing. These are ongoing conversations. Um, we've partnered with a, a really awesome ambassador group, um, which, you know, you're a part of now. Thank you. Um, so part of, you know, part of bringing in these ambassadors isn't just, you know, bringing in people to shill a token or to shill a site. Um, it's also to get feedback, you know, you've been in the poker industry for 15 plus years. Um, we've had other ambassadors been in the industry for 20 plus years. Um, you know, they have gone through these issues. They've experienced them firsthand. Um, and we want to hear your ideas. Some of those ideas have already been implemented, which is awesome. Yeah. And I think the community ownership is really cool as well, because if the whole community has some consensus about an idea that they think would prevent RTA or prevent cheating, prevent bots, prevent scams, prevent anything, uh, prevent bad actors from inhibiting fair gameplay, they could submit a proposal, bring that idea forward, share why they think it's a good idea. It could go circulate on crypto Twitter. People can hear their own ideas. They could talk about it. They could bring it to other ambassadors, bring it to you and the community can then vote. And it's not like, you know, you're going to, you're going to say, I, I I don't want, I don't want that to happen. Or ambassadors going to say, I don't want that to happen. Like the community can decide what is best. And if they have an idea that's better than anyone else's idea, that idea could be put into motion and, and executed. Uh, so I think absolutely. it's, it's a great, way to like um it's kind of it kind of reminds me of like seeing those game shows where you ask the audience and like the audience is almost always right you know like when someone doesn't know the answer to a, a trivia question they ask right. the audience and then the consensus of the audience is pr almost always correct <clears throat> and so i feel like phenom kind of leverages that that group think ability where it's like the community could always come and up with a better answer than any one individual can come up with yeah absolutely for, for big problems like this like it's not a sim like I appreciate the transparency to say that like there is no magic button. It's not like you're just gonna oh we have this you know magic right. pill solution that's like gonna ban every bad actor in the world. That's just not the way that things work. Right. But what we can do is align incentives and create a system that is always being the most efficient to police these problems in the poker community. I, I, and it's just keeping an open, transparent dialogue. I think that's really important. I, I think you just you, you just nailed it right there. It's it's the alignment of incentives. Right. And, and I think it's important to understand like this, this isn't my site. You know, I, I may have had kind of the original version of the idea and I view my job as, as being, you know, taking my background and experience to help get this thing off the ground and, and put it out there. Um, but at the end of the day, this is, this is our site. This yeah. is the community. This is a community owned site. Right. And, and um, giving the community a voice um, I think is, is, is really important and, and, and keeping the incentives aligned. I think what we've seen in the past um is you know when the sites get big and and there's a lot of money at stake um you know the 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 incentives tend to diverge yes right and the play and the rewards get worse and you know we like we used to see like the good old supernova days or the reward system used to be really awesome yeah, and, and then it gets corporate and then it becomes right penny pinching and top down right. and and like the players are forgotten <clears throat> and it becomes like an us versus them thing right, right? it does they have competing um, incentives because the the corporate wants you know to extract the most value for the shareholders who aren't the players right and so the players become the, the the people who are getting extracted you know for the for this corporate profit and the players want the most benefits for them at the expense of the shareholders right so it's like you have two people that have diametrically different interests and like making those people work together is is just 
a, a misalignment of incentives. And that's just a very big challenge. That, Whereas exactly with Phenom, right. it's like the community wants the site to make the most amount of money possible because they earn a percentage of that revenue. So they want the best <clears> experience. <throat> they want the best place to play. They want the safest place to play. It's just, it it yeah. just makes total sense. All, all of the money stays within the poker e ecosystem. Um, and I think that's pretty cool because, you know, we see, we see poker go into kind of, um, cyclical, uh, uh, booms, right? You have like a, a, a poker boom and then it kind of tapers off and then you have another kind of boom and then it tapers off. And I think one of the reasons why is the operators sometimes, um, take too much money out of the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and you know, my, one of my original questions is what would happen if, you know, all this money being generated by online poker sites was kept in the ecosystem? Yeah. How good would that be for our game? Um, and you it know, should be more liquidity <clears throat> because the, the light bulb went off and right. I'm like that could help grow our game in a very healthy way perpetually. Um, and we won't know unless we try it. Right? Yeah. So you mentioned the Phenom poker token. It's uh, an ability to get ownership and earn rev share. How does someone get the Phenom token? Can they buy it? Is there a place to earn it? How does it work? Yeah. So the token is given as a reward for playing. Um, it cannot be bought. It's not going to be listed on any exchange, centralized or decentralized. Um, so the way to get it is just to play. Um, we have a, a, an innovative reward system. There's there's five tiers, bronze through phenom level. Um, and, um, you know, the higher your, your tier, uh, the, the more rake back you earn in the form of tokens. Um, and so, the you know, we reward the players that play the most, um, like similar to some other traditional reward systems. Um, the difference is, one, you have actual equity in the site, which you're getting paid a weekly revenue share. Um, two, you have actual voting rights um, in the, the, the direction of the site. Um, <clears throat> and three, you also have optionality. Uh, we don't force you to hold the token. If you want to swap that out uh, for cash, which would be USDT, um, you can do that at any time. Yeah, that's awesome. So one final question is, where can people play on Phenom? And how does, you know, Phenom structure, this is potentially, I think, of another value add, another differentiator. How does Phenom structure allow people to have easier access to online poker? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> this exciting news, we actually were uh, officially granted our, our first gaming license um, just a, a couple of days ago. Um, so we plan to be broadly available in jurisdictions that don't have explicit laws banning online poker. Um, so, you know, without going through a, 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 an entire country list, if, you know, if, if you are legally able to play online poker in, in your country, um, you'll be able to play on Phenom Poker. Um, what about here in the U.S.? <clears throat> So there's only one out of 50 states that has a um, an explicit ban on online poker. Um, um, contrary to popular belief, online poker has has never been illegal in the United States. And I don't really want to you know jump into a full legality conversation. I can say that you know we have spent quite a bit of time and money to uh, with with the appropriate um, um, legal teams to to figure out you know what we can and cannot do. Um, of course, if a jurisdiction comes to us and says you know you're, you're crossing a line any, any way, shape or form. Um, we are going to abide by those laws. Um, but, um, <clears throat> generally seek, speaking will be broadly available, including to, um, players, uh, in the U S. Yeah. So I think the, the, yeah, like not getting into whole legal conversation, but I think the main, um, perhaps misconception is around UIGEA yep. being a ban on online poker. Whereas, right. um, I, 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 my understanding of it is that it's a ban on, the payment processors to facilitate online poker transactions. But because those banks use fiat, they're not allowed to process transactions. Whereas Phenom is using Web3 technology, they're using cryptocurrency, so they're not using banking intermediaries to process player funds, which is why it's it's legal. Is that your understanding? Uh, uh, legal as it pertains to UIGEA, yes. Right, UIGEA, um, you know, exactly. You know, it, it, it gets pretty complicated because, um, you know, anytime you're talking about custodying uh, customer funds, you know, and, and being a, a money transmitter or, you know, or, or facilitating gaming, um, um, gaming type of games, you know, whether, you know, and, and different jurisdictions define it differently. Some segregate things like sports betting and others do not. Um, so we have to go jurisdiction by jurisdiction to say, okay, like what is their approach to online poker specifically? Cause, right. Cause we're not offering any casino games or, or other games of chance. You know, it's a, it's a skill-based game, which, you know, you and I know very well. Um, and going to the jurisdiction, figuring out the law and saying, okay, like we check all the boxes and say, we can, we can, we can not block this jurisdiction. Um, we're an offshore, you know, gaming entity licensed and regulated. 
Um, and, you know, as long as a jurisdiction doesn't explicitly ban um, their citizens from being able to access an offshore gaming site, um, then you'll be able to access Phenom Poker. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I think we're good. I really appreciate your time. This was super helpful. Of course, I know people are going to have more questions. Uh, they could look look you guys up, look you up maybe on Twitter. They could follow you. Uh, wh what's the best way to get in touch with you or follow yeah. up? <clears throat> uh, it's Phenom Poker app on Twitter uh, or, or X. Um, it's Phenom Poker um, on Instagram. Um, and we're, we're um, trying to build those social channels. So give us a follow and um, we'll have more things coming up, like a, a Discord that's going to be launched uh, publicly for the community to come and start getting involved and having discussions with people on the operational team as well as the ambassadors. Um, and we have a lot more exciting announcements coming up, um, you know, starting with, with, with you. We were super happy to have you on board. Thank man. you. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, guys, that's a wrap. So to learn more and get 100 free Phenom tokens, head over to joinphenom.com, J-O-I-N-P-H-E-N-O-M.com. There's also a link in the description. And uh, you'll have a sign-up bonus for that as well. I'm really excited for uh, this journey with Phenom. If you guys have questions, which I'm sure you do, be sure to leave them in a comment or tag me on Twitter at Alec Torelli. And I'll happily answer them in future videos, hopefully get back to you guys as well. I'm really excited to, uh, to have this partnership. And thanks, Matt, again for your time. And uh, I'll see you guys on Phenom. See you, everybody.